Good evening and bienvenue, my fond fair rouge raiders. This is your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge. Here to bring you <laughs> part three of What if the Magna Defender was in Remnant? Or what if the Magna Defender was in Ruby? <laughs> Yes, 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 I know. Some of you are excited, some of you are curious, some of you are going, What the hell? They look at what the hell does that mean, Magna Defender? What the heck? I never heard of this. It's a relatively older series. If you look into the possible what ifs on the playlist, you'll find two other episodes. There have been a couple of people around recently who have been somewhat asking for it. Even though it's never hit really high on the like goals, never let it be said that Diomedes Rouge does not answer the people who ask, well, who ask of him something that he actually cares about doing. What can I say? I could be a lazy bastard. I apologize. <clears throat> but enough with that. Where we last left off. Ulysses Grant. The current Magna Defender. Well, let's just put it this way. He was uh, confronted by the head of Beacon Academy, Professor Ospin, for, well, being the Magna Defender. And, <clears throat> yeah, let's just say they wound up making a deal. For the next year, the Magna Defender will attend Beacon Academy as Ulysses Grant. In exchange, he will have freedom, so to speak, to do his vigilante work as long as he can keep it in balance with his school. The idea behind it? Change the Magna Defender's mind. Show him that... Not all huntsmen are mercenaries. That they are not all just viewed as meat to throw in the grinder of the war against the Grim. That is Ozpin's goal. <laughs> Meanwhile, the Magna Defender, in exchange for this, gets left alone for the rest of his life, and, well, at least by Ozpin and by de facto anyone in Beacon. And, uh, <clears throat> one moment. Sorry about that. And in turn, well, <laughs> gets to keep on doing his vigilante best. Ah. Now, here comes the fun part. We will kick in with Ruby and her group the day of the entrance examination blah 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 they wake up from the sleepover everyone's somewhat relaxed when all of a sudden they hear a random bullhead pulling up I mean they think nothing of it it's Beacon Academy nothing too strange about it until they start hear until they hear start hearing the chings and changs of spurs hitting the ground as a very familiar face to at least Ruby comes in through the front doors and she goes wait I I know that guy as she sees a relatively tall young man with black le with black leather jacket and dark jeans with a golden buckle and what seems to be a dagger on his hip come strutting through No, I wouldn't say so much strutting, more of walking through with a large bag behind him. As she goes, I remember you! Darts right off towards him. 
You're that guy from the dust shop. Are you okay? We tried looking for you afterwards, but we didn't... You, you, you di kind of disappeared, and then you reappeared. Are you okay? <laughs> As he sets his bag down and proceeds to go with his <clears throat> hand gestures, by the way... For those of you who are new to this series, which I guarantee you most of you are, slight backstory considering I don't know if you'll be interested enough to go all the way back to the first one. So, he is currently mute. Why? Well, his entire city was attacked by the White Fang, and he got left a nasty little reminder of the event as a certain red-haired man stabbed him through his neck and essentially killed his voice box. That's kinda how he became the Magna Defender to begin with. If you want more info, look at the first episode. If not, well, no one's forcing you. <laughs> as we continue, he makes some simple hand gestures going, and the gauntlets translate, I am fine. Please do not worry yourself. Anything of that nature will not permanently harm me. Wait, why are you here? I was invited late, so to speak. Some sort of special arrangement was needed. Oh, well, is, is that your weapon? Yes, it is my defense blade. Awesome, cool, what does it do? It cuts and stabs things. Oh, it doesn't turn into any other weapons? None that I am willing to share about. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Now, as a few of the other people are kind of looking in on this weird man, and that's when, well, <clears throat> Yang comes around and goes, Well, I didn't expect you to take a first initiative when talking to a new guy. So, what's up, handsome? Hello. Huh? I apologize. I forget this is strange to new people. I am mute. My gauntlets help translate. Oh, okay. So, how does my little sister know you? I was with her when she was attacked at dusk till dawn. To be fair, more accurately say, more accurately would be put, I was the guy that got blasted out of the back room and got knocked unconscious when... In the alleyway. <laughs> From that strange man with the bowler hat. Oh. Oof. But it was really cool what he did before that. He was like in a blink of an eye. <laughs> Already right there. Right pointing a knife straight at. Pointing his knife straight at Roman's neck. It was awesome. It was like. Really? He wanted to take my gauntlets. I need them to communicate. Most people here do not speak sign language. Fair point, I guess. Anyways, well, glad to see you here. Be a little bit odd with you over here, but you never know. Attention all Beacon Academy students. It is now time to... <clears throat> well... To start up your entrance examination. In his mind, he is going, Oh, great. What's this crazy bastard gonna put us through? As they all get prepared and... Moving on to the entrance area, so to speak. Or as most of you would know it, the launch pads. <laughs> as 
Ozpin goes through the whole spiel as everyone gets lined up on the pads and everything. Him and Jean are kind of looking like, okay, so how are we going to enter this forest? As... Dean Fung! Son of a bastard! <laughs> as... He is... Ozpin's looking back. He can clearly see the image of a middle finger being raised high. As being raised high straight at him from a very certain black-clad individual. <sighs> As he begins to fly into the forest, be like, Welp, this is not going to end well. Any ideas? <laughs> mm, mm, mm. I think I got a couple. As he takes out his blade and... Spins it around backhanded and looks for a prime opportunity. As he focuses in and within a matter of moments, shunk, sinks his blade into the side of a tree as he's beginning to fall down. As he hears a loud and very powerful and that sudden twinge of extreme pain flies into his mind as he is now just barely holding on to that knife, sticking into the side of the tree as he glides down it. As he reaches up and grabs it, reaffirming his grip with his other stronger arm at this point, as they slowly but surely slide down the tree, Carving a very big, well, slice straight through it. As Ozpin's looking at this, he goes, huh. As Ulysses takes his shoulder and slams it against the tree, popping it back into place, going, mm -hmm. that hurt. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, that hurt. It is your own fault for acting reckless. How was I supposed to know I was going to get yeeted into the sun? <sighs> to be fair, that is true. Exactly. Wait, what? What? I do not have to be argumentative all the time. Huh. Well, good to know. Anyways... As the strain, as Ozpin smiles at this going, hmm, not bad, not bad. Glinda even sees this on her scan, on her view and goes, that was a strange way of doing things, but. <laughs> After a few Beowulves come around and he cuts and carves through them. He finds out, eh, it seems like he's been separated from a large group of people. <laughs> As he gets closer and closer, he hears a large amount of commotion coming in from the eastern direction. As he looks around and decides, well... This ought to be interesting. As he proceeds to walk towards there, <laughs> he sees a Death Stalker, the giant bird looking some bitch up in the skies, and the whole bunch of students fighting with him, including one that he's actually somewhat kinda fond of Ruby. Now, when I say kind of fond of, it's more as he views her in a actually kind of decent light. I mean, she's still a hunter, but mm -hmm. she seems nicer than most of the hunters he's ever met, so. Now, this is where things take a interesting turn. As he's watching all this stuff go down... 
as the Death Stalker looks like it's about to land a strike on, well, another one of the students, or I should say, oh, Pyra. He comes in full speed and slices off that tail spike with his dagger. Shing! Before it even makes impact with her. As he's the one that takes the brunt of the hit from the now blood from the now blunt tail. <clears throat> Unfortunately causing him to slide back in into Pyra and into Ren, because this thing is monstrously strong. But unlike the other two behind him who kinda get knocked off their feet, all it does to him is cause him to dig his boots into the gra heels into the ground as he is forced back a good solid five feet. As <clears throat> he looks at this thing even more determined than usual and runs up, backhanding the blade as this thing tries to snap and claw at him with its giant pincers before swinging its now bludgeoning tail towards him. But, he just jumps on one pincer, then as the other one comes in to clamp him, he jumps on that one, and as the tail spike comes down, he stabs into it and gets reeled back upwards before pulling his knife out and dropping, inserting his dagger right into the tip of the right in between the vertebrae of this creature before taking his fist and slamming it into it, repeatedly driving the dagger deeper and deeper and deeper into this creature. As with one final slam, boom, he grabs the hilt and he grabs the hilt and... <laughs> on pure instinct, extends the blade, shooting it forward through the rest of the scorpion, or death stalker as you prefer it, causing it to somewhat pop out the other side before he retracts it and pulls it back towards his side, killing the grim and leaving the large body to fall and somewhat flail around as the rest of well I guess you could say for the future team Ruby set up a very what you would call this interesting maneuver involving well yes Pyra Rin and Pyra, Ren, and Nora. Good God, I can't believe I forgot her name there for a moment. And yes, they do take out the Nightmare, I believe it was called. As he kind of goes, huh, that was neat. Now, I will say this. I do apologize for what I'm about to do, but this is a what if, and uh, <clears throat> while personally I do love the boy myself, I gotta make room for my mother, for my mother trucker somewhere, and well, <clears throat> this hurts me a lot more than you think it do. As the, everything gets set up, and they all come back into the Academy Hall, the, uh, the teams are announced. With Team Ruby being consisted of, well... <clears throat> you know, Ruby Rose, Yang Xiaolong, Blake Belladonna, and Weiss. 
Schnee. However, one moment here. As the next team is announced of Team Print, consisting of Team Leader Pyronikos, followed by Rin, Ulysses, and Nora. As I said, I feel bad for the poor boy, but to be fair, he did cheat his way in, and while I love Jean, especially how he turns out later in the series, for what I'm planning, Jean must go bye-bye for now. So, yes, other than that, things proceed somewhat normally as he has been assigned a new team. Oh joy! He's already so ecstatic as they now fully introduce themselves. As... <clears throat> they get a chance to, finally. He says, well, we weren't able to talk to each other beforehand, but... Let's, uh, try and see about each other now. I am... Um, the name's Rin. And this is my... Childhood friend, Nora. It is a pleasure. Whoa, it has cool robot voice. Uh, what, why don't you... <clears throat> as he somewhat unbuttons his shirt, as... Team Ruby is approaching, and unintentionally over here. Please do not be too alarmed. My voice box was destroyed. This is how I can communicate. How did that happen, if you don't mind me asking? Very simple, Miss Pyra. I used to belong to a settlement. Unfortunately... It had some cohesive things that the White Fang did not enjoy. We did not discriminate against the Faunus. We were an open community. And we traded with a lot of them. However, they thought otherwise and attacked, destroying my city and killing most everyone there. I was very, very fortunate. I almost died. A very, very soon-to-be-dead man stabbed me through the neck, destroying my voice box. God, are you, by whom, you, you need to go to the psychiatrist? No, thank you. I will have my vengeance soon enough. And I promise you, it will not be pleasant. I can promise that man that. Do you know his name? Adam. With this, Blake gets a bit of a shiver run up her spine, as she didn't know anything about this, at least as far as I remember, going, oh, things have gotten even further downhill. And with that, he kind of picks up his gear and goes, but that is currently in the past. No need to dwell upon our current situation now. It'll be a pleasure working with you all. Now, if you'll excuse me, I think I am a bit tired, and I'm going to try and find our dorms. Right. Okay. Note to self, he does not have a filter. Do not ask him too many personal things if you don't want to find out about them. Right. 
You know what, Nora? For the first time in a long time, I can agree wholeheartedly with you. I feel bad for him. I really do. As Team Ruby shows up and kind of... Well, Ruby goes right up to Nora go uh, Not Nora. Pyra going, Holy cow! Well, looks like we're two ne team leaders, huh? Yeah, it looks like it. And... Sorry about what happened to Yuli over there. He... Wow. Hard to believe that someone so kind can feel that type of rage. Or, you know, been through that type of thing. Yeah. It is hard to imagine. As... Oh, yeah. Things progress from there. They're assigned their... Well... Classes... And... Every now and then... Pyra will wake up in the middle of the night and... Notice... A certain one of her teammates isn't there. As... Yes, it is quite odd. Quite, quite odd indeed how a certain teammate is disappears in the middle of the night, yet suddenly reappears come morning. Mmm, mmm, yes, yes, very strange. Very strange indeed. As eventually there's a confrontation. She goes, all right, where are you going? What? Where are you going in the middle of the night? I believe, I believe we are caught. No shit, Sherlock. Let me think. Um, 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 um. You know we have a curfew. You can't ruin your chance at Beacon like this. Do you want to get kicked out? <laughs> I mean... No, not do it. <sighs> Fine. As he proceeds to do some more hand signs... I apologize. I am a restless sleeper. What's going on, Yuli? Mm, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? Say it's nightmares. What? Say it's nightmares. Really? At this age? Say it's nightmares. I get nightmares about what happened to me. I can't sleep well and need to wander to ease my mind. Very hard to get to sleep afterwards. As Pyra just goes, you should have told me about this. Yuli, as she gives him a big hug, followed up by Rin and Nora, who were eavesdropping. I feel uncomfortable. As in his mind, I feel very uncomfortable and slightly violated. It is better than being questioned and possibly brought up to the headmaster. He would hold me I could keep doing it. Yes, but they do not know that we are the Magna Defender. So it's best to keep that as under wraps as possible. God damn it! <sighs> as he is forced to deal with this, and he goes, I am feeling very uncomfortable and slightly violated. Can you please let go of me now? Nope, nope. Come on, Yuli. Just accept the cu just accept the hub. <laughs> If I must. As he just puts on this stone face of... But on the sides of his cheeks, you can see the blush forming. As I do not like this. Now, if you ever have those type of night terrors again, just... Let one of us know. We can try and comfort you. I will not. What? I will not put you all through this. This is my battle, and I will face it alone. That's not how team works, Yuli. 
as he's kind of popped on the head by Nora. Yeah, you got us to rely on now. Besides, how would you feel if one of us had something similar going on and said that BS to you? I would respect your decision to face it alone, for it is not a physical threat, and therefore not something that you should be too worried about. Oh boy, we have a lot of training to do with him, don't we? Oh, big time. As, yeah. Immediately the next day, yeah, she brings this to the attention of Glenda. Oh boy. And then he gets a talking to from her. So I hear you've been wandering the halls at night to, to night terrors. In his mind, he's going, shit, 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 What do we do now, asshole? It's like, leave it to me. Keep on going. It's like, yes, I do. Mm-hmm. You know that's not allowed. I apologize. I will try to refrain from doing so. I did not wish to disturb my team with my needing for movement. Would you mind telling me what happened? What causes these night terrors? Or do you not know? I do know. It is a long story if you care to listen. We may want to get some tea. As she does, and he goes through the entire spiel. Basically tell, summarizing what kind of happened during the whole attack during the city. What he saw, what he witnessed, what he felt, and what he did. Oh yeah, he isn't letting any detail go, thinking if he can actually make her somewhat understand why he could possibly be having nightmares, maybe she'll work with him. And it kind of works. As Glinda goes from a understanding look to one of remorse and even pain. As she brings him in for a hug and why do people keep hugging me? It's to comfort you, little one. I am not little. I am five foot nine. That's not little. Four foot three would be little. Even then, you can actually find a lot of uses for people of that height. But still, let me go, please. Here. It's a special permit. This should allow you to... If anyone, teacher or such, catches you walking around, just let them know that I'm allowing it. Why would you do this? You know, it's, you're being somewhat considerate, and you haven't caused any trouble, nor does it seem like you're looking into different things, and it hasn't affected your schoolwork. To be fair, you're one of the only teachers, aside from Ublek, that have bothered teaching anything. The blowhard doesn't teach anything, he just tells stories. It is quite odd. Hmm. <clears throat> Well, don't take him too lightly. And believe it or not, his stories can have some merit to them. Whatever you say. Now, why don't you go and get some rest? Affirmative. As he proceeds to walk out of the classroom and... Oh yeah, she makes a report about it straight to Ozpin. Who Ozpin goes... Ah... Didn't know those details, but good to know. 
Note to self, keep him away from any white fang business. <laughs> Little does he know that the dock scene is about to happen. But that will have to wait till next time. Thank you all for being here. This has been your humble narrator, Diomedes Rouge. Bye-bye for now.